Welcome to the Beach Grove United Methodist Church podcast, where you can hear our Sunday morning sermons in audio form and take them wherever you go. This week, we are diving into the book of Ephesians, and we are going to be looking at this nature of gifts and the community and how the gifts that we bring into community help us to be community better together, as well as how we can help to strengthen the community around us too. A reminder that our services are available in their entirety on our YouTube channel, which is linked in the podcast notes. And we would love it if you would subscribe to the podcast so that new sermons come into your feed as soon as they are available every Monday. You can use your favorite podcasting app to follow or subscribe. We would love it if you would help to support us by donating financially to the mission and ministry here at Beach Grove. A link to our donation is available in the podcast notes as well. And we would love it if you would follow us on Facebook and Instagram to follow along with all the fun things happening at Beach Grove, whether you live in Suffolk, Virginia or not. We hope you enjoyed this week's message, and please don't forget to share it with others. Our scripture lesson this week comes from Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 16. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captive, captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints of the work of ministry for the building up of the body of Christ, until all of the of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, for whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be holy and pleasing to you, that through your word for us this day, we would continue to learn how we are connected in this great and holy community that you have created around us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I might uh, take out your sermon notes as we get started with our message today. Just a few things for you to follow along as we uh, go through this message Uh, So, I am coming to the end of my eighth year of pastoral ministry, and I think probably one of the most requested things that I get when it comes to spiritual guidance are folks discerning and trying to figure out where they fit in this puzzle that we often call the church. How do I fit? Where can I serve? What can I do? You know, people often have things they love to do, but oftentimes those 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 things that they love, they don't often fit within the church community. Sometimes it takes a, a, a little bit of molding and a little bit of, of, of working it into the spot. Oftentimes we struggle to conceive how things that we think we are good at fit within how we can or should serve in the church. Right? Some of you are probably sitting there and you're like, yeah, I, I really yeah. I don't know where I can serve. Maybe you've got some ideas. Maybe you've served in positions in the past. Maybe uh, you're looking for for new opportunities in ministry and you're thinking to yourself, where do I fit in into the puzzle that is Beach Grove United Methodist Church? Where do I fit in the puzzle that is this Beach Grove community? That is this greater community that we have around us. 
Right? Many of us have hobbies. Many of us have things that we love to do. Many of us have places uh, that we work. That we worked hard to enter the field that we worked in. Finding a home in our vocation. But if I were to ask you, what are your spiritual gifts? What are your spiritual gifts? I wonder what some of the first things to come to mind it would be. Do we find ourselves equipped for things that we do out in the world? And how do we find ourselves equipped to do the work that we are called to do as the church? Not in the church. But how does God equip us, call us, and gift us with the manners of grace that he offers in order to do the work of the church? Right? Discipleship, in its truest sense, is more than just accepting Christ. But it's actually living into who Christ calls us to be. To the manner in which God has created us, and into the manner in which God has given us gifts to do this work, not just here in this building, but wherever we go. Jesus invites the disciples to follow him. It's not just about accepting that point, but it's about following, learning who they are, so that when Jesus dies, is resurrected, and ascends, that in that next moment, they know exactly who they are called to be. Right, and we see these roles begin to be fleshed out as we read about the early church, and as we heard those stories in the beginning of Acts, as the disciples began to go out and serve in the world, we began to see the way in which they used their gifts in order to serve the kingdom of God. And so too are we called to do this. It's about finding a place to live and serve. Right? Discipleship is not just one moment, but it is a life that is committed to knowing and understand who God has created us to be and the ways that we can serve, the ways that we can live as a part of God's kingdom. And as we dive into this scripture lesson today, as we look and we see the way that Paul talks about the church, the way that Paul talks about the kingdom here, we begin to unpack and understand what our role is as individuals, and then our role as a collective community looks like. Right? We dive into this book of Ephesians. Now, if you ask any biblical scholar, if you ask ten biblical scholars who wrote the book of Ephesians, they would probably be like, well, maybe Paul, but also maybe not. But one of the things we do know is that the book of Ephesians was written before the Gospels. And so we have this notion in which what Paul is writing here in Ephesians is setting the foundation. I'm going to use Paul just because I, then I don't have to like make up some biblical name that y'all might not have any idea of. But we have this foundation in which Paul writing here is not just establishing is, is not just establishing a foundation, but is actually helping the helping the readers to know exactly what the church means by the church. Right? Paul is defining this nature of ecclesiology, which is the study of the church. The study of the ecclesial structure of how we gather ourselves together. And when we look here at this passage in the book of Ephesians, we begin to see how Paul describes our life together as a community. And we hear Paul say, I beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, and just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in all. And so what do we learn about our nature as the church from this? We learn that we are called together. We are called together to better serve the kingdom of God. And if we are going to talk about spiritual gifts, and if we name spiritual gifts as that which we bring into community, then we must also know and understand how we are in community together. 
because it informs and even really reminds us that it is impossible to do this journey of faith alone. And I said it before, I said it when we were going through our visioning process, is, is we cannot be a community of one. Because we ourselves cannot expect to possess all of the gifts. As much as we may want to, as much as we may desire to, we need community around us. Because the community is better together. Community together becomes defined. It becomes defined in this sense of unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Right, we see this word unity popping up in the Bible a lot. We see this word unity popping up in our society a lot. And here I want us to note the difference as Paul talks about unity versus uniformity. Again, right, because we cannot have an entire community made up of just one gift. We cannot have an entire community made up of just one mindset. Unity is about working together for the greater good that God, that God has called us towards. And so when Paul talks about unity, Paul is going to note, yes, there are going to be differences among you. But unity is coming together. Right? Uniformity will destroy communities and it will end up causing more harm than good. Because it forgets the way in which God created us, each and every one of us. And God has given each and every one of us gifts, special gifts, that we can use in our own way. Right? And Paul defines this as a measure of Christ's gift, right there in verse 7. That we have all been offered in our creation. And he says, Christ himself granted that some are apostles, some are prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And if we read in other places where Paul is writing, we will see even more gifts get named. Right? This is not apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Paul is naming. These are, these are the people who are leading communities in some ways. And Paul goes on in other areas to name other gifts, gifts of service. Gifts of witness, gifts of outreach. Yes, gifts of teaching, gifts of compassion, gifts of prayer. The spiritual gifts that we offer to the church, to the community, is the manner in which we all serve and live together in community. The way in which we build up, the way in which we congregate together and go out and serve. And if, we're, and if we don't do this work of knowing and understanding how we fit this puzzle together, that is our Beach Grove community, then how will we know or ever expect to be able to reach the greater community that is around us? Right? In other letters, Paul will give so many more gifts. These gifts vastly different in the roles that they play when we not just create community, but when we live into and embody the nature of community that we have been called to. Right? I, I think when we begin to look at what spiritual gifts and how they impact our life together, we begin to build that puzzle, put it together, so that we can begin to see the picture of the kingdom that God is building right here. So that we know how we are called to reach out. It was like the visioning process that we went through. Paul is telling us, is saying to us, that as we grow, we grow into Christ as a whole body. Being knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped. And if our spiritual gifts are bringing us together, they make us community with one another then the first rule of community, the first rule of understanding spiritual gifts is this nature in which diversity and gifts, and even beyond our gifts, is what help us to truly live into and understand the nature of God's kingdom right here. And it helps others, as they look at and they see our community, to know and understand truly what the kingdom of God can look like. <laughs> Right, we know in other places that Paul writes that the entire body was an eye. How would it hear? The entire body was an ear. How would it see? If we have an entire community of teachers, 
Well, then who would ever learn? I often like to say this one. If the entire community was just a bunch of ordained pastors, we would just fight every week about whose turn it is to preside at the table. And we'd never get anything done. Because all of us like to preside at the not, 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 not yet. And so it benefits us to know and understand our spiritual gifts. To know and understand how we fit together in community. And so you're probably asking yourself right now, right? I like to leave you with a lot of questions as your pastor. I try and answer as many as I can in the short 45 minutes that I preach. But you're probably asking, well, pastor, how do I know my spiritual gifts? Well, friends, that is a good question. We have things like spiritual gift inventories that help us to know and understand. Uh, I meant to bring some, but I invite you to, to, join, to join us together. If you are interested in a spiritual gifts inventory, to, even if you think you know what your spiritual gifts are, even if you've been serving in this church for, for decades, but you want to unpack exactly what that gift is, you may think you know what it is, like, but I just can't put the word to it. Friends, I want, I want us to do these inventories so that we can know and understand our community better. One of our strategic goals as we come together is to begin to identify what those gifts in this congregation are. Not so that pastor just knows where to put you when I'm doing nominations every year. No, don't, don't hear that. But we want to make sure as a community, that as we are going out and we are doing this work that we feel called to do, as we're serving and leading here, as we're offering opportunities for folks to learn and grow in their own manners of discipleship, as we leave these doors and we go out to the world, whether we are serving as a Beach Grove community to, to, to one of our uh, missional connections out in the world, or whether you are going out in the world on your own and have been sent to go and do God's work in the community that you serve, in the vocation that you are a part of, so that we can begin to have those conversations to unpack the ways in which we are called to serve. And within both our congregational context, and with, I mean, within the walls of this building, sorry, within the walls of this building and outside the walls of this building, we are always looking to the ways that we are using our gifts to serve God's kingdom. It helps us to know and understand once we take the spiritual gift inventory and we begin to put those names, those, those scriptural understandings of what it is we love to do. Then we unpack the other things that we love to do, the hobbies, the passions, the joys, and we begin to connect those. You know, for example, I love running. How many people are surprised by that? I love to run, but I also love to teach. That is one of my top spiritual gifts, is teacher and leader, right? I mean, it's only purely coincidental that I stand before you today. But I love running so much, and I've tried to find ways to use this passion, my love of running, and my spiritual gifts of, of shepherding, of learning, of, of, of teaching, of leading. And so I've started trying to help coach some of the youth in our running community. Helping kids learn about running. And in my coaching and shepherding style, doing it in a way that reflects my faith. That reflects the person that God has created me to be. Correct, so I'm sure if we've all played sports, we've all had that one coach who just was not, not the best. But I want to coach from a manner of love, of grace, of encouraging and supporting. Sometimes it's connecting the nature in which we know and use our scripture, our biblical language of gifts, and connecting it with things that we love to do in this world. But we can't do that if we don't understand and know those spiritual gifts. Right? I can't even begin to connect the nature in which I love running to the nature in which I love church if I don't understand the person that God has made me to be. And so I invite us on this journey together to use our gifts in service of God's kingdom, to unpack and discern what those gifts are, the cool things that we can do, the, the things that we've never even thought of. 
And so I invite you along this journey with us. This is not a sermon series. This is just a standalone sermon. It's going to exist on its own for the entirety of forever. But it's an opportunity for us to commit together as a community. To understand and know ourselves better. So that we can understand and know better how we can not only be the body of Christ, but that we can go forth and serve as the body of Christ. In the community here within these walls, and in the community far beyond. Because we not only exist here in this space, but we exist in every step we take out into the world. How will God continue to grow? How will we continue to grow together as we unpack this nature? And so I might come and, and see me after the worship service. I'll, I'll take down uh, names, and, and we'll get the, the inventories. And how, like I said, I meant to, to bring them over, but I got, uh, I got sidetracked this morning. Funds of ADHD. But uh, we want to have an opportunity to begin to unpack those gifts. To begin to dive deeply into the spiritual understanding of what makes us us. And the ways that we can serve in God's kingdom. Amen. As we continue on in our worship service today, let us have a moment of, of prayer as we gather together. A moment in which we continue to lift up the hurts and pains of this world and the times in which we give thanks to God for the offering that God has given upon us. Let us go to God in prayer.